What's up everybody, I am Just Breed Singh and out of all the concerns that we have this year from the great resignation hurting the job market with people quitting their jobs at the fastest rates we've ever seen happen in history to the great recession where they say you'll own nothing and be happy, whatever that means, to unaffordable housing and the housing market going crazy, to student loans potentially coming back, to empty shelves and stores. There's one thing that poses a bigger threat to your wealth than anything else. Extra guac at Chipotle is getting more expensive. Now you might think I'm just being funny to get you to smash that thumbs up button, but it's true. Not only is guac nutritious and delicious, but it's also an indicator of how the prices of things in this country are moving. Everything that you can imagine is getting, well, expensive. Just look at the prices of homes, to the prices of cars, to the rising prices at Disney World, to the increasing grocery costs, to the prices of gas, and of course, avocado prices. At this rate, it'll be cheaper for you to dry your tears with dollar bills than with tissue paper. Why Chipotle? Why do you keep doing this to me? Inflation is really getting out of hand and it doesn't look like there's a very clear solution to how the Fed and the government are going to solve this inflation problem. Like in 2021, we saw 7% inflation while at the same time wages in 2021 grew by 4%. Now here we are today after this quote breakneck wage growth and we're starting to see wage growth already start to slow down and it's projected that wages are only going to go up by 3 0.4% in 2022, while inflation doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. Effectively, what that means is you can work your butt off all year and you work so hard that you get an above average raise, but after your raise, you're going to be poorer than you were before. It's happening because inflation has been getting out of hand and it's been running a lot harder than expected while the economy can't keep up and the person who is paying the price is, well, the average person who now has to pay more money for their groceries, you have to pay more money for your gas, you have to pay more money for your healthcare, and you have to pay more money to go on a vacation. Every time I go out and get some groceries, I feel like I'm paying more money now than I was just a couple weeks before. And the reason why we're seeing such high inflation is because, well, in 2020 and 2021, we printed $13 trillion in pandemic relief quantitative easing and infrastructure money. And now, well, we're paying the price for all this money printing. This money printing helped at the time. The pandemic hit, the economy shut down, nobody was working, businesses were shut down, and so the government worked with the Federal Reserve Bank to print an insane amount of money, and they sent it out to businesses, they sent it out to people, they created welfare programs, they created social programs, they created a whole bunch of things to help stimulate the economy and to get the economy moving. And so while people weren't producing anything, the government and the Fed kept producing money. And so what that did was it essentially diluted the value of our dollars. To put it in perspective, the most expensive war that we have ever fought was World War II. And the cost of World War II adjusted for inflation was $5 trillion. So over the course of the pandemic and the pandemic relief programs, we printed almost three times more the entire cost of World War II adjusted for inflation just to fight the pandemic. Now, whether or not we needed this $13 and if it went to the right hands is something that I will let you decide. But the issue right now is this created inflation. Inflation is when you inflate the monetary supply, which is what we saw happen here. The government didn't have $13 trillion, so what they did is they worked with the Federal Reserve Bank to inflate the monetary supply. The Fed printed this money, gave it to the government, and the government spent this money. So now, when you inflate the monetary supply, you create inflation, which ultimately dilutes the value of the dollar, makes the value of the dollar go down, which then makes things more expensive. If you've been subscribed to my channel, this isn't news. But now the question is, we have this problem, what's the solution? And it seems pretty obvious. The solution then is to fight inflation, but the solution isn't so simple. If the problem is we have too much money in our economic system, then the solution is we need less money. So raise interest rates and essentially burn money, Pablo Escobar style. That could work, except we're not in a normal economy right now. See, you have a lot of people that are not financially educated that are blaming this inflation problem on supply chain issues. But what you're missing is that the supply chain issues that we're seeing are a side effect of the inflation that we have. Because if we go back to the pandemic, people are not working, people don't have an income. If they weren't given this money, what would you see happen? Well, people would be buying less stuff because they just don't have as much money. But if the government and the Fed can produce money essentially out of thin air, give it to people, now you have money that you can spend even though you're not producing anything. And so now if you're spending money on things that you're not producing and you just start buying a whole bunch of things, well, what does that do? 
you create a whole bunch of demand to buy products with no supply of these products. That's what triggered the supply chain mess. And then you have to ask yourself, once the supply chain gets completely ironed out, are companies just going to magically lower the price of their products when people are willing to pay more money to buy a product? I don't know for sure, but chances are probably not. Here's how our economy works when we're in a normal economic environment. When we start to enter a downward economy, this might be a bust, a recession, that's when the Fed will come out and they will also cut interest rates. The reason that they want to cut interest rates is because this helps to stimulate the economy. When you're lowering interest rates, more people are likely to borrow money. When more people are borrowing money, more dollars are entering our economic circulation, which helps to increase inflation. And that's what the government and the Fed are banking on to help stimulate the economy. Now, when you are in a booming economy, things are growing very well. That's when you see the opposite happen. That's when you see the Fed raise interest rates because they don't want to see the economy get out of hand because that could create a bubble that's very, very, very large. And so what they do to help cool down the economy and to keep the economy stable is they raise interest rates. This makes borrowing money more expensive. And this really helps stabilize things because if people have to pay more money to get a loan, well, then they're probably a little more financially stable because they have the means to support the interest payments. So now it's more expensive for you to buy a home. It's more expensive to have credit card debt, and it's more expensive for businesses to borrow money and invest it back into their company. But if the economy keeps growing, that shows you that you're in a robust society because now you are able to pay back your interest and still be profitable. This will also in turn lower inflation because as you're raising interest rates, less dollars are being borrowed. As less dollars are being borrowed, well, that shrinks the monetary supply, which lowers inflation. Well, the problem that we're facing right now is that our economy is slowing down and we could be entering a secondary recession. When the first jobs report of 2022 came out, everybody thought that we would add at least a couple hundred thousand jobs, but what ended up happening was that we lost 300,000 jobs in the early part of 2022. And on top of that, the economy overall is starting to slow. The reason why we're seeing the economy slow down is because of right here, inflation. Our economy runs on spending. When you have money and you spend it, somebody else makes money. The more money you spend, the more money somebody else makes. In order for our economy to function, people have to be spending money. If you are not going to the restaurant and buying the extra guac, well then the restaurant's not gonna have any money to pay their employees, let alone have any money to open up a second store. In 2021, people were rich. They had a lot of money in their pocket because then we were finally coming out of the pandemic and so people had some savings because they weren't spending money in 2020 in the early part of 2021, so they had cash in the bank. You didn't have to worry about paying your mortgage until the forbearance program ended. And you didn't have to make a lot of expenses. And so people had money in the bank and a lot of people were able to pull out a lot of cash out of their homes. So people were rich on paper because everybody had a lot of money. And then you started to see this boom in 2021 because everybody was spending money. You had all this pent up demand from the pandemic and now people were spending money like crazy even though the price of things were going up. They didn't really care because they had the money to spend and people wanted to spend money. This is what we saw happen. Well, now in 2022, people have exhausted a lot of the money that they saved up in 2021 and 2020. And now the prices of things are so high because of the inflation that we saw happen, the money printing that we saw happen. And now people are not spending as much because, well, they just can't buy as much. And because people aren't spending as much, the economy isn't growing as fast. And so businesses aren't able to make as much money, which means they aren't able to hire as many employees, which means the whole system isn't moving as fast as economists would like. So the reason why I keep saying that we're in a weird economy right now is because we're pretty close to entering a secondary recession caused by high inflation. And you can't fight an inflation induced recession by cutting interest rates and causing more inflation because that would make the initial problem even worse. You can't fight inflation by cutting interest rates to create more inflation. That'd be like trying to cut your sugar addiction by just shoving more sugar down your throat. The Fed does understand that inflation is the issue, which is why they keep saying that they want to raise interest rates in 2022. But the caveat to that is that the reason why they're willing to raise interest rates in 2022 is because they say that we are in a booming economy. Because our economy is growing, our economy can sustain higher interest rates, which is why they're willing to do that. However, the reason why we're in such a booming economy in 2021 was because people had so much money to spend. Remember, 
Our economy runs on spending. The more money that somebody spends, the more money that somebody else makes. And so in 2021, people had a lot of pent up demand because of the pandemic. They had some extra cash because of the mortgage forbearance program. They had some extra cash because they weren't paying a lot of things. They weren't going out and spending. And so now people are ready to go out and spend. And even though the price of things were higher, people were willing to pay the higher price because they had the money and because they were just waiting to spend money for so long. That contributed to a booming economy in 2021 because people were ready to spend. But now here we are in 2022, a lot of people have exhausted their additional savings and now they cannot afford the higher cost of things because of the higher inflation. If your cousin Bunty doesn't have any money, then he's not going to be able to afford any more Gucci. And if Gucci isn't making any money from cousin Bunty, then his Gucci is making less money. And if Gucci is making less money, then they're not going to have money to open up another store. They're not going to have money to reinvest into new lines, which means Gucci's profits might drop. The reason why I say that is because you saw luxury companies like Gucci and Louis Vuitton make record profits in 2021 while we were still in a recession. This creates a big dilemma because if the Fed really wanted to fight this high inflation, then they would have to significantly raise interest rates. However, a lot of people don't think that the Fed will be able to or will want to raise interest rates that high. If our high inflation is causing a slowdown in the economy and then you start to raise interest rates, that will slow down the economy even more. But now if you're in a high inflationary environment where the economy is cooling and then you cut interest rates, well then that might help stimulate the economy, but it would be at the price of higher inflation. And who is the person that pays the price for the higher inflation? Well, it's the average person, the people who are not financially educated because now you have to pay a higher price for your groceries, you have to pay a higher price for your travel, you have to pay a higher price for your healthcare, all wire incomes are not keeping up. But the people who are disproportionately benefited by this are the financially educated and the wealthy because now you own the assets that are benefiting when inflation happens. I mean, if you own real estate and you see more inflation and the price of your real estate goes up or your rental prices go up, it's not so bad because you're not the one that's paying the price, you're the one that's receiving the price. Like that, if you're the one that owns the shares of the companies that are benefiting, well, then it's not so bad because you're the one that's receiving the money, not the one that's paying the money, which is why it pays to be financially educated. If you like the idea of investing in real estate, but you don't have the ability or the money to go out and buy a whole property yourself, well, then you can check out our sponsor Fundrise, which gives you exposure to real estate investments with as little as $10. So if you want to learn more, I'll put their link in the description below. At this point, the Fed really has to pick their poison. Do they want to fight inflation or do they want to fight a slowing economy? You can't do both using the exact same thing. If you're fighting inflation, it's going to slow down the economy. If you're fighting the slow economy, it's going to hurt inflation. The thing that you really need to remember is that there's a price for everything that we do today. A stimulus in the economy would be great today, but that's going to become more expensive tomorrow. And so we have to remember, what is the cost of everything that we do right now? Every time you print more money, it makes the bubble a little bit bigger. And what we saw happen in 2020 and 2021 was that the Fed was willing to go to crazy lengths in order to support investors and to keep investments propped up because what they didn't want to see was a stock market crash. When we saw the stock market crash in 2020, the Fed opened up the money printer and created unlimited quantitative easing because they said that they would do whatever it takes to keep the investment market solid. So this is great for investors, it's great for the financially educated because now your stock portfolio is soaring. Even through early 2022, the Fed is still pumping billions of dollars into the bond market to keep investors confident and this is great for the investors but it comes at a price. It hurts the average person who is not financially educated because now you're paying the price for all the Fed's actions. That's why inflation is known as a silent tax because the person who pays the tax is the person that doesn't understand what it is. What's up everybody? If you want to continue building your financial education, Education. I linked a relevant video here that I think you'll love and as an added bonus I have a free guide on how you can start generating passive income that you can download and read for free All you got to do is click that button below. Yeah, I mean that's what politicians always want to do They they want to kind of blame the public for the inflation they create 